Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to 10,000 and Below, a series where I'm going through games that are ranked 10,000 or less um, on Board Game Geek, a giant database of games. But there's some games that are pretty neat to look at and some games that are missed and some games that deserve to be there. We're kind of just doing a drive-by of them all. Today we're starting at 10,901, so let's get started. I do not know how to pronounce this game at all, so I will not attempt to. This game came out in 2005, but it was done by Bruno Catala and published by Asmodee. It's based on Lawless. That was a western theme game from the Blue Box version. Um, Blue, the game was actually, the company was actually called Blue Box Games. Uh, I think they were a division of Descartes. Anyway, it's done by Arabian Nights. Huh. I don't really remember liking Lawless that much. I wonder if this one will ever be reprinted. When did this come out? 2005. Well, maybe not. The next one here is Until Daylight. Until Daylight is actually on my shelf of games to review. I played this one. It's a cooperative survival card game and you're surviving 10 waves of enemies. The art for this game is fantastic. It has some neat components in it. Unfortunately, the game is incredibly random and I just did not really enjoy it much. But it really does look pretty. I'll do a full review of it eventually. Death Show TV. That doesn't sound like a wonderful game. Death Show TV, you're ruthless. Put yourself in the shoes of one of our ruthless contestants and suburb, submerge yourself in a show whose only limits are set by the bloodthirsty audience. This sounds like a really bad, you know, B movie. You can do whatever you want. Okay, the cards don't look bad. Oh, the art, I'm not sold on the art though. Bunch of psychopaths there, apparently. It came out 2017. There's a Dread Ball, Fan Hunter Assault. This game has uh, this game I'm, I'm I'm mentioning because I know this one is from Devere Games, and I've heard a lot of good things about this one. It just hasn't ever really. Uh, looks like it's based on a cartoon of sorts. The artwork for the game is really nice. I just haven't seen much more about it, but I mention it because this one I've seen. It's come across my desk in various ways. Gadgeteers. Battle Ravens, C.C. Higgins Rail Pass, Blood and Thunder. Sounds like a little war game. 1993, Sword and Spear. Ooh, Hyper Slide. I remember Hyper Slide. This is a device I wish I still had, actually. Um, came out in 2007, and what it was, it had these little discs here, and you just slid them underneath the thing back and forth, but you had to know what color to, to slide. Blue, slide it through, and you just slid them underneath this device, and it would register if you slid the right device or not. Really simple, quick one. You could even have like a rubber band thing on it where you could just play solo, where you slide them into it and they come back to you. And it was a lot of fun. I mean, there's a lot of these games out there. It's kind of a play on the whole Simon thing, but I enjoyed it. It's been a long time since I've even seen it, though. Guns of Glacia, Wolf and Hound. I believe this is a game that Z has reviewed. Let's go down and look. Oh, maybe not. I thought he did. Um... Because it's, well, it looks really pretty, though. I like the look of this game a lot. I don't know if the game is any good. It's from Ninja Star. So, who knows, but it is pretty low on this, you know, in the rankings, of course. But, no, oh, it's interesting. Uh, Saki and Samurai. This one I've not played, but I believe I played the original version of this game. Um, which was Rum and Vikings, I believe, was the name of it. And, yeah, that was an awful, awful, awful game. So I'm assuming this one is probably the same thing. You're just, it's just a big drinking game. And I'm assuming it's the same thing. Drill it! Drill it! There's a Firefly edition of Clue. <laughs> There's so many of these games we're going to come across. I, here's the thing, though. The, the cover of the thing... Oh, my word. What, 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 what's happened? Was someone murdered? Does it say? River has been betrayed. Who's working with the Alliance? And where did the kidnapping take place? <laughs> what does it matter where the kidnapping took place? Ah, uh, but you got to stay as Clue. 
Paleolithic, I'm pointing this one out, has very few ratings, but it is a really pretty game from Shepherd Kit. Their stuff looks fantastic. Look at that board. That is amazing. It's a really cool looking game. And don't be surprised if you see me review this at some point, just because it, it looks great for kids. 1830, the card game. I didn't know the 18XX uh, games had a card game. Oh, it's from Winsome Games. Okay. Whew. Well, it hasn't. Ooh. 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 That's. Wow. Ooh. That's it's a low bar for component quality. <laughs> Alrighty, let's continue on here. Is this a ticket to ride game? It just the the font looks very ticket to ride ish. Um. Well, we'll have to wait and see if the. Uh, Looks like uh, that is not loading for whatever reason. Well, we'll keep going down and look at these while we're waiting for that. Um, the quest for Shangri-La. One hit kill. This got 116 different ratings. Ooh, that's not a very good cover. And Vorpal Scissors, Frost Giant, Living Steel, Gray Goo. Okay, what is this about? Ridiculous overpowered weapons and monsters and cuddly rabbits. You want to build a weapon, arrange them in sequence. Wait a minute. It sounded interesting that you talked about arranging things in sequence. Oh, you're just trying to build these weapons. There's Cthulhu's grandpa. All right, all right. Maybe, maybe it's better than I thought. Cthulhu's grandpa. This is Alan Moon and Days of Wonder. What is this? Ticket to Ride Express Europe. Oh, this is like the mini ones. I see. Like the London and... Well, that's weird. This looks like it's halfway between... I gotta hunt this one down. I don't have this one. This looks interesting. When did this come out? 2018. Huh. Well, now I have a quest. Alrighty, let's continue on here. Little Thunder Witch. Little Thunder Witch. I gave it a six. My kids liked it. One of my daughters, Amy, loved this game when she was younger because it was the one game she could beat Melody at. It was just a memory style game trying to remember where stuff was and she really liked it. Wizards of Mickey CCG. This came out in 2008. That's a collectible card game that only came out in Italy. A collectible. Man, I tell you what though. When I was in the froth of kicks uh, of, of, of CCGs, this would have been hands down a game that I would have been like, oh, I want to get this, you know, because I like Disney, and the idea of a Disney CCG back then would have really excited me. 2008, though, is not that old. Sergey Shubson. Okay, this is from uh, Dry Measure Spiel. They make a lot of cool games for kids. They also make some card games, Cockroach Poker. Yeah, all right. There's a lot of coffin cards. A yellow and purple circle. Okay. It looks like an interesting little card game. Uh, let's see here. Ob Dirk de Mauer. Didn't I review this one? I did. I'm still surprised that this game is not getting more buzz for how cool it is. This game here, which you're trying to collect all the different parts of these um, ghosts, those are definitely ghosts, um, you have these magnet strips that you're moving back, and when you rotate the board, all the ghosts move to new locations. It's, I cannot explain it. You have to watch it, and the first time you see it, you're like, what is this? And you want it. It's a really neat game. All right, Iliad Heroes of Troy. I feel like I played that game. This is a game from Escape Velocity Games. Yes, I definitely have played this one. Two different factions. You're playing the, them back and forth against each other. It came in a nice book. Did I review this one? I did review it. Alrighty. I need to add some of these ratings in. I'll have to get around to that. Now, here's an interesting one. Killer Bunnies and the Conquest of the Magic Rabbit. Now, this is not the Killer Bunnies that you might know. There's multiple Killer Bunnies. Um... 
this is the follow-up for killer bunnies and the quest you can combine them and i forget actually the differences i remember enjoying this one but realize that i don't think this is a great game by any means i like the humor i like a lot of the stuff that goes on in killer bunnies and i can't explain why it it invalidates pretty much everything else i say about games this one is for some reason some weird exception that i i like this game and i cannot figure out why um I don't get it. I haven't played it in a long time anyway. Easy Breezy Travel Agency. All right. This is a very pretty little game. I just talked about this one uh, because I believe I reviewed it five years ago. And it's uh, they made a little deck of cards. This was a, a contest, I believe, or a, a thing that Dice Hate Me games did where they had these games that had a certain amount of cards in them. I can't remember what it was. I think it was just a, a deck of cards. And you were just traveling around trying to get commissions. And I thought it was a fine game. Nothing that blew me out of the water, but it was a nice little game. Birth and then the Seven Years' War. Cosmic Balance, Light and Dark, Tortuga. So Tortuga is from Queen Games, and this is a piratey style game where you're trying to get to a place before one else. You're going to roll dice in this game and assign them. I think it would work better maybe for kids. It's just a little too light for me. Uh, it's a decent game. Queen makes good games, nice production and all, um, even if it is a little generic on how it looks, but uh, interesting anyway. 1899 and Shrimp. So Shrimp's a game I've definitely taken a look at in the past. It's just a speed game. You're just flipping over shrimp and you're trying to find the same number of shrimp or the same color shrimp or the same type of shrimp, uh, shrimp boil, shrimp gravy, etc., etc. Panic Tower, 2009, 150 ratings. Well, that's a pretty impressive building. Looks like Jenga, but straight up. How does that not fall? Uh, it looks like a fun abstract strategy game, but the pieces look a little generic. Um, I mean, they have banana Panic Tower written on them, but they're just straight up sticks and a board. Mm, okay. Well, a lot of people have rated it anyway. This one I got to look at because I like the name of it. Paradox University. For centuries, they educate the best masters of time. Oh, no. Master O'Clock has retired. We need to find a thing. And you got to not go to the same timeline as other people. I see Cleopatra, and that looks car like Carmen Sandiego. That's a really small little game here. Huh. What is the year for this one? This is another one that has just, I missed it completely. 2019. Well, there you go. Maybe it's not even out yet, widely, but it looks interesting. Grave Robbers 3, Suburban Slashers from Sunnydale Street. Like, what does that name mean? Well, this is yet another game from the Z-Man lines where you filled them all together and just insane movies. There was so many of these different movie games, and you could mix them all together, and this one looks like a slasher suburban type movie. 2009, you could mix them all together. Fish Frenzy. Let's take a look here. Fish Frenzy. Oh, that's a pretty game. This is from Crash Games, uh, which is out of business, unfortunately, this time, from Brett Gilbert. Huh. I've not seen this one. This is one that seems like it. there's probably not a ton of these in existence. Uh, Sam is the one who reviewed it for us when it came through. That's why I never saw it. This one, Celtica, has 729 ratings, which is a lot. This is a Kiesling and Kramer game, which came out from Ravensburger and Rio Grande back in 2006. It is not one that I've ever had the opportunity to play. Okay, the art's interesting. That board, the graphic design is not selling. I mean, wow. Talk about a product of its time with the names. and That's a staged picture. But, all right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, this might be a good game, but it is ranked fairly low. Uh, it's also, you know, it's an older looking game, so you'd have to really kind of persuade me to give this one a whirl. All right. So then the next thing that we have here is, let's see, Tomorrow the World, The Prince's Bride, I Hate to Kill You. 
I hate to die. Um, so this one here, it's just basically a duel. It's the duel between, the, the famous duel, the, one of the best duels in history here, between Inigo Montoya and the Man in Black. And even Count Rugen and Prince Humperdinck can win now. I don't remember exactly how it is, but you're just playing cards back and forth and rolling dice. It's a simple back and forth style game. Not bad, but just okay. Blood of Noble Men, the Alamo, Toot, Cabaret, Name Burst. Name Burst is an interesting sounding game. Maybe not. Looks like every other party game that came out during this time, including the red stuff that you can hide things in. Kama Sutra is a game probably not fit for uh, families. Uh, you use balloons, uh, and you're trying to pop balloons in various ways. Aranda and Jumbo and Company both got over 100, so let's take a look at them. Aranda is a pretty neat looking abstract strategy game. That's a good picture. Uh, I don't know if the game is good, but that, that picture, top rate on that. Place pieces, you have to put pieces in adjacent areas, chain reactions, and you can play this on Yucatan Online, it says. It's from Clemens Gerhards. Well, there you go. They make a lot of great abstract games. Jumbo and Company. It was first published as Mousen, collected by chasing them into your holding pen. Play the right animal. 16 cards. Rock, paper, scissors format. Catch, chase, dog chase cats. Catch, chase mice. Mice chase elephants. Okay. Wait, what is happening in that picture? Is that dog knocking the elephant over? Looks like it. This game is bonkers. This is one that I had, I had hoped that restoration would pick up. The, the concept of this game is bonkers, in which you're going to move around and you can change what spaces do, but the spaces are just go forward one, back one, and all that stuff. It's very much a product of its time. I mean, look at that board there. But it does give me some pleasant memories of seeing it, but I cannot rate it, give it a high rating. It's not a very good one. Bigfoot versus Yeti. And then they sit there and go, aren't they pretty much the same thing? Wolfed. Ninja Squad. Ah, Ninja Squad. I really, really want to like games like this, but this one from Backspindle Game, you're running these ninjas down, jumping from building to building uh, with these cards. This was just such a mess. I hated every moment of it. It just, it looks cool. There's little neat min ninjas, but the game itself did not play well. Let's see here. Who stole Ed's pants? This has 285 ratings. I like Who Stole Ed's Pants. This is from 8 Foot Llama. 8 Foot Llama is a company that no longer exists, but they made really silly games with silly themes. Uh, uh, monkeys, monkeys Going to Mars. I, I forget the name of their, all their, their games, but Who Stole Ed's Pants? And you have to figure it, you have to try not to look guilty in this one because no one has asked Ed the details of the crime. Again, the themes of these are silly. The components are pretty low quality, but when I played them, I enjoyed most of the games from that company. Then we have Natch, or Notch. This is from a back of Spiel and Rio Grande Games. Michael Schock. Alrighty, this is a, you know, it's known as Knights. Ah! Ah! I say this because I got another game. I want to say it's Colorado. I can't remember which game it is. That came with these cards, and it always drove me nuts because I didn't know what they were for. But I remember now hearing about Knights. Oh, folks, not a, not a great cover there. But I heard it's a good family-style game, though. And Michael Schock does pretty good things. You capture four, a dice combination. You roll several dice, keep the good ones. So it's a, you know, a Yahtzee-style type game. Ah, there it is. Trivia. Some editions of Colorado have contained one or more creepy car castle cards. Ah, it used to drive me crazy. I'm like, what are these cards for from Colorado? Fictionary Ragami. I gave this one a 7, and that was back in 2012. Oh, this is the Angel game. These are guardian angels, Ragami. They travel around the city, and they're helping people with their problems, trying to get them. I remember seeing this game and playing it. it had the dice with the one red pip on them, and I would have to go back and look at it more to remember how all of it played. I remember the theme, 
And you're going to solve conflicts. You have points of strength. It's been a while. This is an interesting one. This one definitely fell off the radar. I haven't heard anyone talk about this one since this time. Jumpy Jack, crosswise. Crosswise. The family game has players thinking in all directions. Okay, you're making horizontal way. They're making vertical and trying to block each other. Okay, so it's one of those style games. That should be like its own abstract thing. Where I'm trying to do one thing, you're trying to do another. Ultimate Soccer 17, the Battle of Prague. There's Trader Mechanic, the Trader Mechanic game, which is... <coughs> anyway, Dice Hate Me was having fun doing this for a while. They made deck building the deck building game. And here's Trader Mechanic, the Trader Mechanic game. A little too inside jokey for me. And you're all fixing cars and working together. Uh, but one of you has been hired by a rival auto shop. I've never played this one. And it's mostly because the name just drives me crazy. Uh, Synod. What is this game? Oh, it's from John Cloudus. Small box games. Alrighty, so you have 18 cards. This is a, a mini style game. Oh, the art isn't bad. Well, that graphic design's okay. But the art is fantastic. Millions, The Last Soldier, Covenant, Pitch Deck. There's another Rory Story Cubes, Montebello, Contrast. We'll take a look at Contrast and Off Curs. Contrast, a party game where you characterize objects the same way, opposite, and you pick one of the four cards. Everyone's going to pick. You're trying to match the majority. Oh, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty game. Hmm. Party games are... Here's the thing. Uh, when it comes to Board Game Geek, if a party game's ranked low, that doesn't mean anything to me. It still might be good. Board Game Geek traditionally rates party games lower. Off curves. Six lighthouses. You're going to manipulate them to sail your ship around two boys. Back to start. This is from 1987. <laughs> the things we put up with back in the 80s. I'm sure it, it might be a fine game. It looks like it was recommended for the Spiel des Jahres, but that board is really throwing me off there. The ships look good. Alexandria. Well, this is unfortunate that it's so low. Alexandria's a pretty cool little game from Looty Creations in which the library is burning down. In fact, one of the players might be helping to burn it down. The component quality, I mean, the art's fantastic. Component quality, not so much. But each person has their own agenda that they're doing while this library is burning down. And I thought the whole thing was a neat idea. Alrighty, and the last game today is the Greater East Asian War. We always look at the first and last one. This is a big war game, which has... A map and lots of counters. This game came out in 2009. Does not look like it, unfortunately. Uh, it doesn't say how many counters it has, but it has a 34 by 22 map, so that's pretty big. Victory points. This is from Decision Games, who's well known for their war games. Well, there you go, folks. That is the Another 100 Games. We're now into 11,000 and below, starting next time. Uh, but uh, if there's any games here that I didn't talk about that you think I should have, or games I talked about that you want to discuss farther, the comments are open. Talk about them there. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.